Hi, my name's Keith Cooper, North Light Images, and in this video I'm going to have a look at lighting and monitor settings and other things related to a print workflow if you're producing prints. Now, I've got lots of uh, other videos looking at aspects of this. So I've got a review of this uh, viewing lamp here, this Ilford Ilfalux viewing lamp. Um, I've also got a recent video where I looked at using this, which is a professional level viewing stand, which has adjustable brightness. It's D50. This is the sort of thing you would use commercially. Um, it's a very accurate viewing stand for, you know, for lighting. And the lighting inside that is D50 or pretty close to D50. I say pretty close. I'll come back to that and I'm going to go through some details of some considerations you might have about the type of lighting you're using, about monitor settings, things like that. All of this though is aimed at making it easier for people to get good prints. And it's about the prints. Um, it is not about necessarily how they look on the screen, it is about making prints. And I say this because you can get very, very technical in this area of color management. Now, I've mentioned this before and I'll mention it again, no apologies. Best book, I suggest, you'll, you'll get this second hand, you'll find it. It's called Real World Colour Management by Bruce Fraser, Chris Murphy, Fred Bunting. Um, this one is exceedingly well thumbed. Um, I've had it for years. This is the one I go to to check things out when I'm not quite sure about stuff. I put some other links as well to things in the notes for this, but I've got lots of videos looking at, say, monitor settings, monitor calibration and that. But what about the general calibration of your screen? Because people go, well, I'm not sure of the settings and things. You know, does it make a difference? Am I doing this right? Is this why my prints are coming out wrong? Now, the reason prints come out wrong is almost never anything to do with the printer. That's the good bit. The bad bit, it's usually your settings, your editing, something like that. The good bit about that is you can learn how better ways of doing it. The printer, you're stuck with the printer as it is. Modern printers are great. If I get a duff print comes out of a printer, it is almost invariably my fault and entirely my fault. So if I can make mistakes on stuff, anyone can make mistakes on this sort of stuff. So I'll start with the screen. This particular screen here, this is a BenQ one, this is calibrated to a temperature of 4000. Now that's quite low for a monitor. Normally you might well calibrate your screens to D65 or 6500, um, which is a good general purpose use for, for screens. Uh, that, if I was to have a 6500 screen here, would look incredibly blue. Remember you're seeing this on a video and the problem with seeing this on a video is I'm having to white balance the video in post-production and settings on the camera to make things look white in the video. Um, our eyesight is much more adaptable, so we have auto white balance. Now, it, that works for uh, light brightness levels doesn't work so well for color, but I'll come back to some color aspects later when I look at prints under different types of lighting. And you'll notice I've got two quite different types of lighting here as well as the room lighting. But basically set your monitor up. If you were using a screen calibrator, which is the best way to do it, I would normally set up if I was doing editing work and I've got some screens over the other side of the office where I do my main work. They're set to D65 or 6500. The two are not quite the same, but if you want to know why D65 is what it is as opposed to 6500K, and I'm going to say this many times, read the book. Um, I know it's not a popular YouTube thing to suggest people read the book, but you know, really you will get the detail out of this. Now, I've got this screen. Let's say I'm setting this screen up to do some work on, I, I, as opposed to filming for videos where I've set this to 4000K to match the room lighting around here. This lamp here is, by the way, set to 4000K as well. So I'm hoping that when I do the video, this looks fairly similar to this, looks fairly similar to this. Well, that, that's great. I've set everything to the same temperature. It's not always feasible. 
because if I've set this to D65, which is a standard 6500, um, if I set it to that, then the lighting is almost like almost certain going to be a warmer lighting, i.e. a lower color temperature. Now at the moment here it's 4000. Um, the, the normal room lighting I would use would be about 3900, so it's closer to um, old tungsten lighting, although it's LED based, it's a warm lighting. This is a medium white as opposed to a cool lighting. Trying to set your room to an accurate color temperature is futile for most people. Unless you're setting up an office that you're going to paint gray and you're going to have gray furniture and you're going to wear gray clothes. Um, yeah, maybe there are some technical commercial aspects where you design studios where critical color is important, where you'll go to those lengths. In the real world, you do not need to. Um, so I would set this at 6500. What about brightness? Well, in a normal room environment lit by artificial light, I'd set this for around about 100 to 120 candelas per square meter. You'll find the units uh, may not be that clear, but it's usually uh, 100, 120. If you're working in dim lighting, you might want to set this as low as 90. But there is a slight issue, is that our vision changes subtly depending on lighting levels. That's why no matter how you set your screen up, editing outdoors for print would be pretty hopeless because your eyesight is going to be so thrown out by the bright light if you're doing it outside that you're not going to get very far with that. Now, this is where you might use something and you'll notice there's a monitor hood on this. These are very helpful because really what you want is that the monitor you're working at to be in the direction you're looking, the brightest light source available. If that's so, then your vision will normally adapt to the white point of the monitor. If you've got sunlight coming in through a window just behind the monitor, that is going to throw your eyesight, your visions out completely and you're going to edit things wrong. And yeah, getting the screen right, brightness right, is a key to getting your prints the right brightness because the most common problem I get people ask me about is my prints are too dark. Well, it's almost always because your screen is too bright. If your screen's too bright, you edit things accordingly and then when they print, lower dynamic range and prints and prints look dark. It's a classic problem for it. And people then say, but if I put my screen dimmer, it's too dim to use in the room. Well, you know, the answer, you've already, you've, you know the answer, it's too dim to use in that room. Reduce the lighting in the room. Um, now, if you are serious about editing for printing, you really do need some control over the lighting levels in the room. If you are stuck just doing uh, working in a particular environment, you've got no control over it, then it might be you might want a brighter screen to work on. But you have to remember that when you're printing, if your prints come out too dark, you're going to have to do some adjustment before printing of making the image brighter to print. Ideally, you shouldn't need to do that at all. So we've got this set for 6500, 100 CD, that's set okay for that. But what about when we print? Surely if I'm editing at 6500, I should view the lighting here. I should use 6500 lighting for viewing. Well, as I've said, what happens is that when you move your head from looking at this, if I'm looking editing here, to looking down at a print here, the white balance system in your vision complete, just compensates for it. Um, we're very good at getting rid of colour casts. It's why if you're sitting under a tree uh, uh, full of, uh, in the summer uh, on green grass, under a tree, lots of leaves, the light around you is very green. We don't generally see things as suddenly taking on a very green tinge. Our visual system corrects for that. And that works very well when you're doing printing. So I can look at this. This is 4,000. I can look at this. This is 4,000. If I look at this, which is 5,000, because it's quite bright and I'm moving my head, I'm, I've got a good feel. Now this, it looks okay, but because of the room environment, at f which is at 4,000 here, I'm seeing this as slightly cool. Now, does that matter that much? No, not for color adjustment. For brightness adjustments, getting things right 
matching the brightness of this, the brightness of this helps in evaluating prints. I've got a load more about that in the video I did about this. Um, I'll put links to all of these in the notes for it. If I look at this one here, this is quite a bit brighter than that. And this one, if I get close enough to it, the colours look OK. They do look a little pink, though. Is that real? This is where the quality of the lighting matters. If I'm using the lighting here, this is just ordinary LED lighting. There's a light, a, a proper light over there at 4,100, I think. And these are nominally 4,000. If I look at these things like this, there are subtle differences in colour. Now you might say, does this mean I simply can't edit without getting very high quality lighting to check my prints? For commercial use, you use something like this. You might even set your monitor. 5,000 as well, just to make the match even better. And there are ISO standards which specify the brightness for working, all of these sort of things. That's if you want to go on the, along the, that route, which you might well do for commercial reasons. But I'm just talking about making ordinary prints. And looking at this, this one here, this is set at 4,000. Yeah, that looks okay. Let me just change this one to 5,000. Now, looking at this one here, and I will adjust during the, the video, I will change the white balance setting of the whole video just to make these look a bit better. That's because that's what my vision is doing anyway. Um, so I'm going to try and replicate that a bit in the video, although it is a bit difficult. Looking at this, this one looks, this one looks great. Uh, the colours look right. I know it's a test print done on a printer. This was done on an Epson ET2850. So I know it's not the greatest of printers. Um, hence the black and white is not as good. Yeah, but I'm evaluating print quality here. I'm not looking at details of colour. What I rely on for colour is getting it right on the monitor, having a good profile for the printer and the paper and printing and also using test images. I know what these test images should look like. I don't need to see what they're like on the screen. I can just test that out. So if I look at this one here, and I look at the one here that's lit on this D5. Now, these are nominally both D50 or 5000K. Um, they do look slightly different. Does that mean they're no good? No, it doesn't. You have to use a bit of experience and where that comes in, in this is the bit about actually looking at prints. When you put your, let's say you've got, you've got a print, you're going to display it somewhere. If you know the lighting where you're going to display it, check your print in the lighting and lighting levels where you're going to display it. If I was displaying a print in a very dim room, I might brighten the print a bit here in editing so that it comes out better when I actually print it and view it in the room where it's going to be if it's dim. Similarly, if it's going to be viewed in daylight, take your print and have a look at it in daylight. Now, with daylight, with a paper like this, you've got to be careful because this has got optical brightness in it. So it actually, the, the colours will actually change if there's any UV present. So you have to allow for that. If this is seeming a little imprecise and you're of a nature that wants everything precise and nailed down, then get over it. There is a lot of, oh, it just works in this sort of stuff. If you are really uncomfortable about having things imprecise and not having accurate numbers for everything and strict guidelines, then you know what I'm gonna say. Get yourself a copy of this book, get yourself a proper viewing screen and an accurate calibrator and a good monitor. S take your time, set up your lighting levels and everything, read the ISO standards and that'll keep you busy and that will save you having to go out and do any photography or actually worrying about your prints. 
what I, I come across far too many people who worry about the minutiae of print viewing and things and never think about what's actually they're photographing and why they're doing it. And as I said right at the start, this is about making good prints. Now, these are just this is the test image, so I know this one inside out. But this applies if I'm printing as well. There comes a point where I go, yeah, I know it's going to be slightly different here, slightly different here, slightly different here. The real key is, does the print look OK? And that's the important bit. So be careful about that. Now, there are, if you want to be really precise about it, I mentioned using ICC profiles for uh, when you print of a particular printer. It's possible when you build the printers, when printer profiles, they are designed to use a standard illuminant. That's a, a viewing source for when you're viewing the prints. And that happens to be D50. What about if I know I'm going to be using tungsten lighting? I can use, I can build my profiles for tungsten lighting using a tungsten illuminant when I build the profile. Now, you need the profiling software. You need to do all the, yeah, this is a lot of effort. I have done it a few times. Was it worth it? Mm, probably not really. I don't have the need for that level of precision. Yeah. Colors will look different under different lighting, particularly because it depends on the quality of the lighting as well. Some LED lighting will have peaks in it and dips. It's color rendering. This is more than the CRI. And I'll put a link to an article that looks at this in the, in, in the notes as well. This is more than just the CRI numbers. This is about the quality of the lighting. So the light bulbs in this, and this has got uh, fluorescent lights in, specially designed ones for, for viewing cabinets. The lighting in this is really quite good. Uh, the lighting in this ain't bad, but if I see, when I look at this, if I think I can see an ever so slight pinkish tinge and I don't see it in that, I'm going to assume because this one, this one here is 10 times the price of this roughly. If you buy a new one of these, um, and this, this one um, is likely still to be going on eBay sometime because I just don't use it very often. Um, but this one here, 1300 quid. This one here, 130. So 10 times difference in price. Yeah, if you're setting up commercial print and stuff, you'll buy a kit like this. I'm going to say most people are not going to buy a kit like that. They're going to be far happier with something like this. I mean, I just put the color. Well, there we go. I've got this now. This is now set to 6,500. And it looks incredibly bluey white because everything else here is influenced. It's, if, I, if this was the only lighting in the room, this would probably look OK. Um, but I can put it back. Oh, there we go. We've gone down to 3000. Yep, that's what uh, it's tungsten lighting. I'll take it up again. We're back to 4000, which should match. Well, match here, if not that. If I want it to match that, I'll just take it up to a bit bright up to 5,000. No, don't want that. Take it round again. There we go, 4,000. Um, don't get too bothered by this. It's really about appreciating the prints, spending time looking at them and actually getting a feel for what they look like. Hence why I keep banging on about using this test image because I know this test image so well. If I'm testing a new printing system, I will print this test image. I don't need to see this. I don't need, I know what this should look like. Um, there are notes, yeah, I've got download links for this. There's a free download from the North Flat Images site. So that's it. So the gist of it is keep your brightnesses roughly okay for when you're doing, uh, when you're evaluating prints. Don't put the absolute worst way ever to evaluate a print is like that. Now, this probably doesn't look too different because I've got the room set up to make the video look OK. But in general, the absolute worst way to ever evaluate a print is like that. Evaluate a print, get the brightness roughly the same because remember the brightness makes a difference. Evaluate a print, look at the print. There we go. In that move, movement of the head is what resets your white balance uh, or your, your visual system's equivalent of white balance. 
colors will look different, but yeah, colors look different. And uh, that's another thing you get used to and learn to develop. So I hope that sort of overview of all that is of help. The key thing is, if you want to know about the details and you are concerned about the numbers and doing it right, get a book like that. Now, there is, and I'll put a link to it, and people often ask me about using Photoshop. Now, this massive tome, this Martin Evening, um, this one is Fo Adobe Photoshop for photographers. This one is Adobe is Photoshop CS5. You think, well, that's ancient. That's not wrong. No, I would say 90, perhaps even 95% of what's in this book is still relevant to using Photoshop, the latest version of it. Um, I've got, I'll put a link to a PDF of the uh, color management section of this. And that's really useful. That's perfectly relevant to Photoshop these days if you're using it. But my two you know, things to say, if you want to learn about using Photoshop, all the stuff I know about using um, layers, masking modes, all the stuff like that comes from this. I've got copies of this for several versions of Photoshop. It gets thicker. It covers more things. You don't need all the advanced features of Photoshop. If you want to learn about this new fill modes and various things like that, resampling, you will find articles, you will find videos and stuff and that. But if you want to learn the basics of how to edit your pictures and get great prints in that, that say is perfectly valid, even for the latest current version of Photoshop. Um, it's a woodwork. You'll notice this one's in fairly good nick, whereas the color management book is very tatty. Um, tells you how often I use them. This one I dip into for reference occasionally. This one I look at quite often. Anyway, I hope that's been of use. Please do ask questions if you've got any, um, because it's people's questions is why I produce stuff like this to try and make it a bit more obvious for people to use. Um, I find this stuff relatively straightforward, but I've been doing it for years. And I've also been trying to explain it to people for years, and that helps. But if it's not clear or you've got some questions, just ask. Who knows, I might answer them in another video. But anyway, thanks for watching. Oh, please do subscribe to the channel as well. Once again, I forgot to do that. And um, thanks for watching.